Bias makers, they're not as tricky as you may think, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how easy and fun they are to use. Welcome back to Pattern Pool TV, I'm Monica, and in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how to use bias makers by using a block from my Groovy Hearts quilt pattern. Bias makers are perfect for Celtic work, for making stems, and you can get really creative with them and come up with your own designs. In this video, I'm going to use the Groovy Hearts pattern just because it's really simple and an easy way to get started. And if you're interested, the Groovy Hearts pattern is available as a PDF purchase on our website, and I'll put the link in the description. Bias makers come in a range of sizes, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make quarter inch and half inch bias. To make bias, you're going to need your bias maker. This is my quarter inch and my half inch. You're going to need some bias strips of fabric. I also like to use some pre-cut fusible web on a roll. There are different brands. I know that Clover make the bias maker and the fusible web to go with it. Or you can cut strips of your own. And I'm also going to use some spray starch. Just out of interest, you can get bias makers that have a channel. So when you make up your strip of bias, you can actually be applying the fusible web strip at the same time. I never have a lot of luck with those. So I'm just gonna stick with the original bias makers. The general rule of thumb is to cut your bias strip twice the size as your bias maker. Always just do a test piece first, so cut one strip and test it, because sometimes, depending on the brand of your bias maker or the thickness or the fineness of your fabric, you may need to cut your strip a little bit wider or a little bit narrower. So this is how you cut your bias strips. I like to cut my bias strips from a fat quarter. What I do is I take my selvage edge and I bring it across to the top edge of the fabric, lining it up. That gives me a 45 degree angle, which I'm going to press. Next step is to open out the fabric and you'll see our crease is on the bias grain and that's a little bit stretchy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my fabric on the crease. You can now use either piece of fabric to start cutting your strips. Because it's now too long to cut with my 24 inch ruler, I'm going to fold my piece in half, folding so that my bias grain is going to be together. I then like to place that in a right angle on my cutting mat. There's a line going straight down and here's a line going across and that's where my fold has been aligned with. And I'm going to use some half inch bias strips. So therefore, if I want my bias to be half an inch, I'm going to cut strips of fabric that are twice the size. So I'm cutting one inch strips of fabric. I'm also going to cut some half inch strips just so that we can have a play with the quarter inch bias maker also. This is how I like to make quarter inch bias. A very light spray of spray starch and I then thread my strip through the bias maker. The wrong side is facing up to the plastic side. Flip it over and then use a pin to help slide the strip out through the nozzle of the bias maker. I actually like to turn my bias maker over so that the right side of the fabric is facing up and as I iron, I tilt the bias maker up on an angle like this and the iron is following directly after. I then iron strips of fusible web, so quarter inch wide fusible web with the rough side onto the wrong side of my strip. I've cut these strips myself, so I'm just going to butt them up together. And there's my strip all ready to iron onto my work. And this is how I make a half inch strip. Once again, very light spray of starch. Threading the strip through the bias maker with the right side facing up towards the brand name, flipping it over. Sliding the fabric out through the channel with a pin. And I like to make my half inch bias with the wrong side facing up. Now 
Now you can make your bias with the right side facing up or the wrong side facing up. It's totally up to you. It's all about what works for you and what suits you. I'm now ironing my strip of fusible web onto the wrong side. So now that your bias is made, you can peel away the paper backing and iron it onto your project. So whether you have a specific design or whether you just want to have some fun, you can curve it, make swirls, and that's because your fabric is cut on the bias grain. You can then stitch your bias on. You can use a decorative stitch or you can straight stitch it or even use an invisible stitch or stitch it by hand. Now that our bias is ready, it's time to prepare our background fabric. With the Groovy Hearts quilt, I did make my quilt in a white fabric and so I cut my background square which is 16 and 3 quarter inches. I was then able to put my white fabric on top and very easily trace the design onto the background fabric. For the sample I'm going to use a very lightweight denim fabric and that's going to be a little bit tricky to trace my design onto. So I'm going to show you a trick now for tracing a design onto a dark background fabric. To do this I'm going to use a piece of net or chul and a permanent marking pen. I'm going to trace the design onto the chul. You can trace two lines if you want to. I'm actually just going to trace one single line in the centre of my heart shape. Take away the paper and I can now see my design. So pin your design onto your background fabric. You can put it in a little bit of an angle if you like. Just make sure that you've got a, about two inches around the outside edge. To trace the design, I've just used a dressmaker's pencil. Now the Groovy Hearts quilt is a quilt first design. So I've actually layered together my backing fabric with my batting and my top layer. I have the half inch gap of batting all the way around the edge because I'm going to join it together with the easy cover strip method. You can see how I do that in my video and I'll also put a link in the description. And what I'm going to do is just mark straight lines. So they're going to be, I'm going to mark a line in the center and then I'm going to mark lines spaced an inch and a half apart on both sides. So to quilt, I'm just using a variegated thread on the top and on the bottom. That's about a 50 weight. And I have a stitch length of three, a size 80 quilting needle and my walking foot on. And it's just a matter of stitching on my marked lines. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button. It helps YouTube to know that this is the kind of content that you'd like to see. It also helps us to grow so that we can keep making these fun and informative videos for you. Also, why not share the link with a friend? Now to apply the bias. So peel away the paper backing and to get started we're just going to tuck the end under just by about a quarter of an inch so it's nice and neat. Position the bias over your marked line and it's just a matter of very carefully ironing it in place. I like to move my iron in circles and that helps to ease the bias around. We do have some tight curves, so you will have a few little wrinkles maybe, but that will stitch out nicely. To finish, just cut the bias a little bit longer and tuck the end under, and now iron the strip onto the other side. To stitch the bias in place, straight stitch, nice and close to the edge on both sides of the bias.
This is what it looks like from the front and this is what it looks like from the back. And quilting first means that I haven't had to have come back and quilted in between and all the way around the heart. So that's as easy as it is to make a groovy heart block. If you want to continue on making the quilt, all of these designs are in the pattern or you can come up with some designs of your own. These blocks were all then joined together using my easy cover strip method. I'll put the link in the description so that you can check that out. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next week. Bye.